We're back uh, with more discussions right here on the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Olawole Olakode, or Lokode, rather, the Commissioner of uh, Police in Ocean State, has been talking tough recently. Now, he's ordered the immediate disbandment of uh, the state's surveillance squad over what he calls unprofessional conduct by the officers uh, of that squad. Now, YMC Opalola, uh, the police spokesperson in Osho State, announced the development in a statement yesterday, Sunday, although the state police command did not list the officers involved uh, or what the unprofessional conduct was about. The development comes weeks after some members of the command returned money as said to have been extorted from some students. The officers were reported to have extorted money from some students uh, of the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilei Fellowship State, in March 2022. Let's uh, look at the issue of police brutality in Nigeria. So welcome a guest who is a security analyst, Mike Ejofo, a former director of the Department of State Services. He joins us live from Abuja via Zoom. Uh, Mike Ejofo, thank you very much for your time and good morning to you. Good morning, and thank you for having me. All right. Uh, um, despite the, the, the protests that are held in Nigeria across the country in 2020 uh, for the end of not just SARS, the special anti-robbery squad, but um, uh, the, an end to police brutality, we still see extortion and, uh, you know, uh, brutal, brutalization of, of citizens and residents in Nigeria by uh, officers of the law. Why do we still have this situation on our hands? Well, so many reasons uh, for still having uh, these uh, incidents. Uh, general work in society. Don't forget that the police is also part of the society. And uh, you see the, uh, police still brutalizing people. There are so many videos trending where, uh, in fact, the last uh, I saw when. Uh, the police officer was saying that he was right collecting his money and uh, they can even report to uh, to whoever that it is his right. And uh, you see some of them brutalizing, sacking phones of people despite the Inspector General uh, directing uh, to stop uh, such uh, irresponsible action. Now, uh, for the this one that happened, where you're talking about the Commission of Police in Oshman State in banning the... I think uh, it could be actually a result of the recent uh, meeting held with the Inspector General of Police to sanitize the system. And uh, in, in so, in the two incidents I referred to earlier, uh, in fact, the first public election officer took immediate action and those who were disciplined. So I think uh, the commissioner is in the right direction to see that uh, his command is also sanitized. Although we don't have details of exactly what happened and the officers that are involved, but I think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, th this issue of extortion uh, by police officers, we are used to it. I mean, it's happening happening on almost every street where you have a police checkpoint. You most are most set into 80% of the time part with money. If you're a commercial driver or if you're a private uh, vehicle owner or driver, you may be packed over and one or two things may be said and do say bring some money. Uh, does this in itself pose a security threat to Nigeria? Well, for me, it's a security threat because if you go to between uh, Okene and uh, Auchi, for instance. I've said this in times without number. I don't know how police is going to handle that uh, that road. Traveling on that road is a nightmare. Even if you go to the South East, it's a nightmare the way they extort money from people with reckless abandon. You see them collecting with a, a, a distance of uh, not less than 40 kilometers. You have more than 10 checkpoints. Some of them oversee each other. So I think uh, with the new first uh, public relations and the action we've been taking, something must be done. It's not only on those roads, because these roads are the roads I apply, and uh, it's a nightmare, honestly. I don't know how the police. And if you want uh, the people's confidence to assist you with the police, for instance, and you need to harass them, there's no way you take their confidence. 
So it's a major threat to national security if uh, you don't have confidence of the police that is charged with uh, protecting you. You can't volunteer information. You suffer in their hands. And I think uh, the IG is uh, doing something about it to see that, especially before we get into an election. Some have said, you know, that uh, this, this, this can, Nabacha, uh, former pr head of state of Nigeria, has been quoted as saying if uh, there's any insurrection in the country that lasts beyond, is it 24, 48 hours? It means that the authorities are complicit. For the police in the country to consistently, over the years, turn their security posts into a revenue collection point, uh, which you've said is a security threat to the country, um, can this continue, Ms. for? You're an experienced uh, security uh, uh, official, you know, of the highest uh, level. Can this trend continue without approval, complicity, you know, uh, uh, from the top of the police echelon? Well, I will say approval, so to speak, but I will rather say complicity in some areas. Some uh, officers, senior officers expect uh, returns from the uh, junior officers. And uh, if a senior officer is expecting uh, uh, returns, there's no way he can be disciplined. But I think with what is going on now, we, it, 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 it's a case of strict liability. The officer collecting the money has to face the consequences. I'm claiming that his officer uh, or senior officer uh, asking him to or his make, make, uh, makes a return cannot be a defense. So I think uh, the moment they begin to take action against the junior officers, the junior officers again will be discouraged from uh, taking uh, bribes from people or harassing innocent citizens. Uh, but you, you're saying that there's something new being done by the police, IGP, and you know it's yielding results like we've seen some of them. But these, these arrests are made because the, the people in question reported. I'm in Lagos right now talking to you. I can guarantee you that there are checkpoints around Lagos State where police officers will be collecting their daily returns from commercial uh, vehicle drivers. In Abuja, where you are, I do not know how it is, but I can, I'm sure that somewhere someone is going to collect money uh, for, for doing his job. So are, are you sure that things are changing, that there's anything the IGP has said that will change the situation? Especially when we're talking about millions of naira being being made on a daily basis, um, we know we're aware of of of, of uh, directives by previous IGs about you know roadblocks and checkpoints and all that. And after he says it, it, they give it a week or two. They continue doing what they usually do. So is is this really changing? Well, you see, it's been a, an endemic situation and been long in the city. So you don't expect it to change immediately or once and for all. Uh, you, with the advent of social media, after the SARS uh, protest, and SARS protest, you can see that some policemen are even scared or afraid to collect money from them because anything you do now, people video it and send it to social media. So it's a way of uh, also helping the police to check and bring fish out with bad eggs. There are so many good police officers. You know, for Lagos, when they collect uh, money, I don't know about that. But in Abuja, you know, Abuja is quite different from uh, from Lagos. First, this is seat of power, and the transport system in uh, Abuja is quite different from the transport system in Lagos. It's more organized in uh, Abuja, and the, the way you have these uh, touts, the call-out bureau, that uh, make a talk to the police. But in Abuja, it's not like that. I think the time will still overcome all this uh, situation. Apart from junior officers being punished, you think the senior officers, for instance, the heads of the tactical unit, uh, maybe the uh, the DPOs, if not the CP of uh, the divisions where these officers are attached to, or their their you know unit heads, should also be punished, because you're saying there's somehow a link between the money being collected from the junior guys and the guys at the top. Yeah, the truth is that uh, since uh, the commissioner of police said uh, he's going to an investigation had been instituted, definitely some people, both senior and junior officers, were indicted. So let us wait for the outcome of the investigation. 
Uh, uh, when we talk about nipping this in the bud, you know, what way, what role do you think the laws, you know, the right laws being put in place will will help to ensure that the police officers, when they get on the road, they're disciplined and they do their job strictly? Well, we'll have what is called a uh, oddly room for the junior officer or query for the senior officer. So disciplinary action is being taken, some of them dismissed, some reduced in rank, so those are the punishments. But if it borders on serious crime like murder, the person is first dismissed and uh, subjected to uh, prosecution. So I think those are the laws that provide for checking up all these uh, miscrimes in the, in the police with a view to within them out. I mean, when we talk about laws, we don't have uh, absence of laws. I remember one of the IGPs in recent in past years um, it launched the Code of Conduct for the Police, a handbook which is meant to have been distributed to all the police officers. We have uh, the Code of Conduct for Public Officers in the Nigerian Constitution, which I'm, I'd like to believe you're well aware of. You know, we have these laws that are there, but still we've been seeing these issues being, uh, uh, you know, these laws being broken. I mean, it's, a, it's against the law for a public officer to collect money or any inducement whatsoever, even in terms of gifts. Mr. Geoffrey, you're well aware of this. Um, is there a, a lack of the political will or lack of will by the political class that makes public officers feel okay to be able to break the code of conduct for public officers in terms of collecting, you know, inducements and even gifts? I mean, I do know a number of police officers who, when somebody, when they come in, maybe they come into an office newly, and the people in the area will gather themselves, maybe a market union, maybe traders union, you know, and all that. A professional body will go with some, some gift to say, oh, please, take, we want to welcome you. And, uh, you know, all these things have a role in influencing the officer. So the code of conduct for public officers is quite clear on what you should, you should be doing and what you should not be doing as a public officer. Uh, but still, it's being flouted. Is there a role that the political class is playing, you know, that is sending a message to these guys out there in black and black to say, it's okay if we do it, we can get away with it? It takes two to tango. Corruption is the bane of our society. First of all, there must be a giver and there must be a taker. Uh, like I said earlier, if it bothers on serious bribery, like uh, what we are talking about, if, if such cases are established, the officers are prosecuted. And we should not also um, single out the police. What of our politicians? You can, you've seen of inflated contracts. Some of them are being jailed now uh, for over-inflated contracts. Uh, some receiving gifts. I remember a case, I can't I remember exactly, I think it was... Uh, then former Minister of uh, Petroleum was uh, even uh, prosecuted for receiving a wristwatch. Those are the, the laws are there, but the implementation and enforcement is a, is a problem. And uh, the general corruption in the country does not help matter. So everybody wants to get free because the economy is difficult and uh, the times are really hard. But uh, that does not give any excuse. Anybody who is caught should be prosecuted. Uh, uh, some of the acts carried out by these police, some police officers are uh, nothing short of criminality. And you begin to wonder um, how come you know, people who go through a process of recruitment and training would have such a mindset. You, know, you wonder how they even get into the police. Is it a problem of, is there an issue to, with, with recruitment or with training? You know, because there's some people who are, are downright criminals. I mean, I'm talking from personal experience and encounter with some police officers. You look at the use of, of drugs, for instance. It's, it's a, an issue that we can talk about on another day. Is there a problem with the recruitment methodology of the Nigeria Police Force? Or is there a problem with the, the training of these police officers that are not even aware of the do's and don'ts? What do you say to this? Well, the recruitment, recruitment process is uh, really very faulty. Uh, even in our leadership uh, recruitment process, how do we recruit our leader? Not until recently, when uh, INEC, for instance, is trying to sanitize the process. The, pro the procedure has been stuff ballot box papers, do carry ballot papers, write figures, and let them go to court. 
And when you go to court, the court is not uh, even helping matters. Uh, the, the, the side case when uh, it gives the natural rule, you, you can't explain some of the judgments from the court. And these are the same politicians who bring their people, their cronies, to be recruited into the police. And when they are recruited, their legends also go to the people who brought them, the, 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 the politicians who brought them. Some of them came into the police because they have nothing to do. They are criminals, and there's no uh, way of uh, trying to string them out to know what to do. So I think uh, the recruitment process is contributory. Training, even when you go to the police uh, college, you remember the scandal for, uh, that was heard by AIT. What are the conditions? Uh, China, sorry. What are the conditions of training in the school, in, in, in the various schools? It's appalling. You see the kind of fear they use. So they train and say, well, let us go out there and make our own money. In the process, you recruit criminals and they go out to the field, begin to harass people. So both recruitment and training process, welfare and the lack of equipment is also as it. If you look at, for instance, when the police or the Nigerian army, the military, goes out for foreign operation, you can see that they perform excellently well because of the environment in which they operate. But our environment is also contributory. If people will also learn to get their, their, their papers right, but people will not go get their papers. The next thing will be just go out and uh, uh, offer money to the police without even asking. Some of them are asking, so these are the, uh, the, the, the reasons where you have all these problems. Mm. And in the reasons you've given life, the solutions to solving this, you've talked about training, recruitment, uh, lack of equipment, the environment, you've talked about the giver and the taker that, uh, you know, it takes you to tango, uh, and a lot of other, you know, reasons you've given, and these reasons are looked at and worked on, I'm sure they will serve as solutions to nipping this issue of police brutality and uh, extortion in the bud. Mark, you're for, uh, former director at the Department of State Services, and security expert, thanks for joining us with your analysis on the breakfast this morning. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you very much. And that's the size of our package. It's been a thrilling edition of Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. Don't forget to follow us across social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa. On YouTube, we have two channels Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle, where we live stream. Our programs. Uh, thank you very much for your time from all of us here at our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartel. See you tomorrow. Good morning.